Yeah. Well, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Don Walter from Augustine Institute. I'm the director of Diocesan Partnerships. And um, thank you uh, to all of you for all of the that you do in promoting formed and Obviously, we're here to help and serve you in this uh, endeavor to bring people back to the church, introduce them to our Lord, and to have a deep relationship with them. And we're so involved in looking at your pastoral plan, how good that is, and how we can help with that in our own way, uh, led by the Holy Spirit. Um, Bishop, Your Excellency, would you lead us in prayer to open us up? We're happy to, to do so, Don. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise as we gather in this Easter season and in the joy of the risen Lord. Continue to animate our hearts by the power of your spirit living within us and working among us. Bless all of our parishes, and especially as we engage with this resource of formed, that we may lead more people to know your son, to love him and serve him, and to be his witnesses in the world. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, yes, as it was in the beginning, the beginning. It's not, so and there it shall be, be world without end. Amen. And in the name of the Father, and, and of the, the Son, and of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Uh, Your Excellency, did you want to have any opening words for those who are listening here live, and those who will be listening to the recording? I mean, um, and I haven't really planned opening words, Don, but I'll just I'll thank everyone uh, for attending. It's always a bit of a push to get uh, people in on these uh, Zoom meetings. Uh, but, you know, form is a wonderful resource, as we've all learned. However, it can be only it can only be as wonderful as its use. So uh, we, we have to you know, really use every means at our disposal to try to deploy it and thereby leverage the good things that are contained there, the riches that are contained there, uh, to build up the faith in the diocese. But, so I thank you for attending today, because uh, this is really uh, helping us to find ways to, to embed the resource more fully into the life of the diocese, which is for the benefit of the people we serve. That's all I've got, Don. <laughs> Amen. That's beautiful. Your Excellency, the... The words of the bishop mean so much to all of us. So thank you for that. And thank you for, thank you for your leadership in this endeavor in the pastoral plan for the diocese. It's, it's showing good fruits already. So we'll start sharing. And there we go. So again, thank you for that and the opening prayer, Your Excellency. And uh, love your shield as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put that up there. So the pastoral yeah. plan, we took a look. Yeah. <laughs> we took we took a look at that, and of course, to, to be in step with your leadership. And so phase one and two are at the, the end of that year. So we're looking at that to reach out and engage all people with the message of the gospel and to be an inviting and welcoming church that fosters community. And uh, we were talking, Dora and I, the other day, that really does permeate through all of the phases and an ongoing um, a call to the Great Commission right to to bring people to christ in his church so it's a beautiful plan there we go in the wrong direction and we love your website too by the way uh we noticed on the the circular on the on the top in the fourth one that you have form there and the resources and that's mm -hmm. what we're going to draw from today we want everyone to go to the diocese website and then be able to click on the resources and I'll take a look at that right away too. So I'm going to change screens and show just how wonderful that is. Yeah. And it's a great website, by the way. <laughs> so if you go to the website and the Easter resources for formed, well, gotta go back one. And then it brings to the page, the Easter page from form.org. You can see my the screen, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Fantastic. So we're going to be sharing some of these things on here today. So we're going to scroll down. And one of the things we're focusing on today is a little bit of adult faith formation. Uh, we've 
very much all the time geared towards, and we'll see a little bit for the domestic church and the children. But it's those young adults and adults sometimes that really set the tone for what goes on at home. So during this time period, we want to bring people, obviously the adults, the parents, into the realization of who they are as Catholics and their identity as Catholics. And so to deepen their faith, as the parents go, so go the family, as we all know. So when you get on this page, you're able to see the entertainment, the Annie Moses show. That's definitely for the parents as well. They'll get into it. The whole family can enjoy it. But as you go down, look at the children's programming for Drawing Closer to God, which is an art program. So when they click on that for the family, they can click on their um, sheets to draw. Right? And we're going to look at Divine Mercy a little bit later. Via Lucius, ending with eternal rest, at least a mention of that. The days of Easter, obviously, we draw. He is risen, Brother Francis. So they can keep going down and looking at all these resources. Uh, but what is another way to look at this, too, is to share what has gone on in the past year within the diocese. So I'm going to share my screen and flip. There we go. And what we did is took the metrics from the last year and take a look at the parishes that are doing a great job. Of course, it depends upon size with the... And take, we'll take a look at this all the time and, and how the parishes are doing. So let me pull a sense. So, St. Alphonsus, who goes to the top five? St. Alphonsus and Purification of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Michael the Archangel, St. Peter in Chains. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom. What does that mean, though? So we have 37 active parishes. The total user base right now is a 50% increase over last year, and it's 100, 100 new registrants every month. So that even snowball as we go along because the word gets out. So kudos to everyone who's getting people registered. The 14 average log per user, it's it's a kind of a number that we use at Augustine Institute, but it needs a tiny bit of explanation. So that means an individual on average is logging in 14 times a year, but one person can log in for the family. One person, the head of a class or a small meeting, you know, be logging in for 12, 15 people at one time as well. And then sometimes when you log in, I log in, I'm on all day. So it's one log in. But it's just a measurement. It's a good measurement. And we'll look to try and increase that usage as well. But what's fun to look at and is very revealing is the top 15 series that are being used. So when I go through this really, we'll break it down into personal use school parish use, and the domestic church use at home. So podcasts in general in the secular world are coming popular, and it's also reflected here a little bit. So the daily reflections with Dr. T. Ray, he reflects on this morning's the day scriptures. And then when they click on that, what's really great about that, his reflection comes on, then the scriptures reading themselves, then it will roll into something from formed that pertains to the scriptures reading of that day. So it's meant to keep people engaged in their faith. The nice thing about that is that on the third item or, or whatever they stop, that that identifier, which is their email, will say, well, they didn't finish watching the third item. It'll go on to the form subscription and say, continue watching as a reminder that they can continue watching it. If you the time during the day. So daily reflections form now is like a podcast of Monday through Friday. Chris Stefanik show, uh, very much podcast like. And those are very much a personal use. Brother Francis goes across domestic use and young school uh individuals or or the school. So it crosses both, but those are highly repeated. The search is uh, that charismatic uh, invitation here too um, that uses typically in the parish or one-on-one -on -one evangelization. 
Now, the Lexio, the Lexio series are Bible study. After Sacramento, which is repeated within a, you know, the situation within the parish for individual or groups for the sacrament, Lexio Bible studies are the most repeated uh, resource. So in other words, if they're watching Lexio Mary, like in our parish, they could, we did it three times already. It's repeated because it just drew a lot of interest. Then you have Reborn for the sacramental prep for baptism. Then personal use, audio books. Uh, you can download a book just like you can on Kindle, but there's the audio version of them as well. So there's a lot of people that are listening while they're going to work or in the yard. Um, number six, Ryan DeFrey is definitely domestic church. That's... Uh, The Lighthouse Talks are the, the CDs, if you remember them in the back of the parish uh, before. Those are usually individual. Again, they're people working, they're doing something, they got the headset on, they're listening to it. So that's individual use. Saints and Heroes Collection, Domestic Church, Symbolon for RCIA, The Creed, 10 Sessions of Knowing Your Faith, 10 Sessions of Living Your Faith. And that too was unique in the beginning because it had not just one person talking for each section. It had Dr. Ted Shree and another person discussing that topic. So very much a pre-runner of that idea. People like to watch people talk about and inter interact because I think they missed that so much during COVID as well. So they're drawn towards that type of video presentation. Benjamin Cello, very much a musical uh, genre for children. And then this is interesting, 14 and 15. Now the Chosen is the Chosen program that a lot of people know about. There's millions of people watching it. And we know they take artistic license with that. One of the things we do have on Formed is for all three seasons of the Chosen is the Catholic commentary um, on each session by Dr. Scott Heffelfinger and Dr. Michael Barber, who are fantastic. They're, again, discussing podcasts like what artistic license the, the session has uh, taken and the apologetic bent on it. What is the Catholic viewpoint through the lens of the Catholic Church? So it's fantastic. That is entertainment. And so also is the Carol movie, which we'll see... Uh, I'll take a look at it a little bit here because we want other people to know within the diocese, what's, what's everybody else watching? But those two are entertaining and entertainment. And I always like to say it's a pre-evangelization in mode because it raises curiosity about the faith. We're just talking about how do we raise curiosity about the faith? It's through entertainment. It's through the simple things that we do every day or Sunday the family even just getting in the car, going to mass, the neighbors see that. That's pre-evangelization, a charitable act, pre-evangelization. Or why is this person virtuous? Pre-evangelization. It doesn't always have to be verbal, in other words. So um, I'm going to stop there and uh, see if there's any comments or questions from anybody else or what they see or what they're using in their parish. Or any thoughts? Uh, Don, I'm curious to know with respect to the chosen, uh, and I have to say I've, I've watched the series, but I haven't watched it on un Um The commentary that you created, the Catholic commentary, was that in response to uh, concerns that people expressed about maybe not appreciating where where the series would be scripturally faithful or where it was taking license or how it was taking license. It really does get down to that. And especially Dr. Michael Barber is bent towards that where he takes it and picks it apart a little bit. You know, our Blessed Virgin Mary or uh, Judas going up to Jesus saying, hey, I'd like to be one of the 12. <laughs> you know, it wasn't, it wasn't quite that way. And it, it gives a good Catholic bent. But I one of the things when people had asked us to put the chosen on form that was our reservation and we asked them can we do a catholic commentary on it they agreed to let us do that uh so 
we want to be able to draw those people into the faith and what it means scripturally and the connection between the church and scripture and what uh, truly happened. But in a sense, too, we want uh, to kind of give a, a, a tacit approval to people diving into scripture and imagining what's what it is, putting themselves in contemplation about scripture and then bumping it up against the magisterium. Is this true? Or what does the Catholic Church teaches? What does the catechism teach? And so we we love people to have that little bit of a of a take on scripture, but bump it up against a magisterium because scripture is the voice of the Lord. We want people to listen and acknowledge and know the voice of the Lord when it's spoken to our hearts. So fantastic. Thanks, everyone. So one of the the number 15 was very interesting to me. Find Mercy uh, Steady by Father Michael Gately was not in number 10 to 15. So, mm -hmm. this was, but it's the movie about Pope John Paul II, and it is three hours as well. So, it's two nights. So, there are a lot of individuals watching this movie on form. So, it, it, right in the place uh, about Divine Very well done, uh, award-winning movie as well. So here's Divine Mercy. Because again, that now that your website goes to, and in that drop down for Easter, Divine Mercy is right here. This is a great study that you can do after you, 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 you know, got the curiosity up about uh, Divine Mercy from the movie. And the Divine Mercy study is here. So 10 episodes, you could do 10 weeks of that. And I'll show the trailer to that, to what that is about, because it's, this is an award-winning series, by the way, as well. God said to me, In the Old Covenant, I sent prophets wielding thunderbolts to my people. Today, I am sending you with my mercy to the people of the whole world. Before the Day of Justice, I am sending the Day of Mercy. My name is Father Michael Gately. I'm a priest in the Marian Fathers of the Immaculate Conception. I want to share with you the second greatest story ever told. Now, right off the bat, I should point out that, of course, the first greatest story is that of sacred scripture. So what I'm describing as the second greatest story is the best story after the Bible. And the story is amazing. I mean, it's got lots of history, miracles, and incredible saints. For instance, it's got Our Lady of Fatima, St. Maximilian Kolbe, and St. Faustina Kowalska. But the main protagonist, the one who brings it all together, is St. John Paul II. Now, you've probably already heard his story before, but I bet you haven't yet fully heard the most important part. All right, so what is it? What's that most important part? Well, that's what we're going to be covering in the second greatest story ever told. much the world needs to understand and accept divine mercy. Jesus, I trust in you. Watching the Carol movie for Easter, 
And we were talking about Easter, Divine Mercy, the 50 days of Easter. So you can watch the movie and raise curiosity. We can, you have form throughout the whole diocese. So put the movie on in your parish, invite people in, and then invite them also to sign up for form. But they can watch one, you know, three hour one night, three hour the next night, run the Divine Mercy study that really dives into obviously divine mercy and i know you're in the the year of the sacred heart of jesus so we're going to have another webinar i've made uh, to help promote the can do the consecration to the immaculate heart sacred heart of jesus devotion to that um, and that is available on Formed as well. 33 Days to Morning Glory. And when you look at it on 33 Days to Morning Glory, everything is on there. All the videos, the guides that you can put off, and the leader guide is. So that's all on Formed. All you need to do is this, and I'll show you and remind everyone how easy it is to sign up for Formed. Um, anyway, uh, is, there some, oh, is there a question, by the way? Uh, let me know if there's a question that pops up. Okay. I'm going to go to home. There we go. So when you sign up for formed, it's very easy. Let me get back to this. Oh, let's go this way. Go to form.org. And just as a reminder, it's very easy to sign up. You type in your parish, and I'm going to use mine just because, you know, zip code versus postal codes, same thing. 33 days to morning glory. Ah, thank you. There we go. We're going to mm -hmm. back up. So when you go to form.org, go to sign up, and then type in, it's always put in the postal code, or the zip code, because it narrows down. My parish is city of Kasha. All you do is click on that. And then you go, yes, that's the parish. So next, this is all you need to do. Put in your name and then your email address. They'll send you an email generated automatically, and you can start watching. And then from there on, it recognizes you, and all you do is to hit watch now. And you can click on that and starting to watch anything that you want. And you can find the same location for Easter here and all those, you know, 50 to 100 items that are on there for, for Easter as well. So it's that easy. One of the things we wanted to talk about today that a lot of people don't know about, maybe we could take a quick poll here. Has anyone heard of Via Lucius? Mm -hmm. The 14 stations of the resurrection. This is a fantastic and exciting. Um, I think Pope John Paul to help institute this as well. So this is on the same page. as the Easter page that we have up here. Again, just go to Formed. It's up here and hit Easter or go to the website for the diocese. Click on that. Hit Via Lucius. And it'll bring up, and I'll show, this is a very short trailer, but it explains that a little bit, what it is. I'm very excited to explain a new program that we're launching here at the Augustine Institute based on a new devotion that's been emerging in popular piety in the, amidst the church, and that is the Stations of the Resurrection. I'm sure you've heard of the Stations of the Cross, where we follow our Lord's suffering on Good Friday and through a, throughout His Passion. This will be a following of the Stations of the Resurrection, following the glorified, risen Lord, 
and seeing the different people and places he encounters so that we can learn more about the glory and joy of the resurrection. What I love about this is the, the ability to do this in multiple formats and combinations. In fact, we did this at our parish on Zoom. So we listened and watched, uh, listened to and, and prayed together on Zoom. Um, the Each station, we sang a little tune at the end, which was bringing us together. All, but we also listened to the the commentary about that station from uh, Dr. Jim Gray and Dr. Ben Akers, we, to a man, to a person, everyone said they never felt the Holy Spirit so much on Zoom, didn't think it was possible to, to anything we've ever done. We that's singing together on Zoom. It was, it was phenomenal. But you can read it on formed. So in other words, when you bring it up like this, I'm um, going to go full screen. You can read it so people listen. And then if you want to play it, so here's the first station. It starts with the empty tomb, and it goes all the way up through Pentecost, which is the 14th station. Let's play just a tiny bit of it so it starts. Via Lucis, the way of light, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The first station, the empty tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we bless you. Because by your glorious resurrection, you have given new life to the world. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him and very early on the first day of the week, they went to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they were saying to one another, Who will roll so away the stone for us? In the book, you can do, read along, people can listen and pray. You can also do it on the Amen app just by li just listening through this as well. So you go through each, you can do one. We did, I believe it was two or three a night because it was done quick enough. So you gather people together wasn't long. It was like half hour, 45 minutes to be able to go through these as well. So you can click through the book as well. And then the other way is, other thing to do is to listen to the explanation of and going a little bit deep, deeper scripturally um, in each station of the cross, where it is in scripture describing that. So it's a Bible study. It's a prayer session. It's stations of the cross. And it brought our community together in in a, in a glorious way so it's one of those things that you can do any any questions or thoughts on how you would do that or comments on suggestions oh there's some things in the chat room i think zara is there there um were just some specific questions about someone wasn't able to hear but uh i don't see any questions but there is a comment what i really like about formed for the diocese of Peterborough and all around the world is it provides holy habits for people to grow in their faith because let's face it we need to go to mass and I thank God for our beautiful priests mm -hmm. to get our sacraments to grow closer to God and then the priest cannot answer everyone's questions in their parish even if it's a small parish so these little holy habits that can help us grow closer to god jesus and his church beautifully said oh. sure the uh, don and dora i'll just uh, mention i didn't uh, manage to say it earlier but i know over at the cathedral parish they were using dr bad brad petrie's uh Bible study on the Eucharist, one of the Lexio uh, series, um, where I think they had uh, regularly 12 or 15 or 20 participants. And I noticed they also um, they also had the books available uh, for people. So I, I guess you could you say something about the ordering those books or how that's how that's managed? Yeah, definitely. And every on you go on formed and at the beginning, opening introduction to on the opening page, there's a you can click on uh, ordering the study guides 
And there's a big discount if you order five at a time. And if, it's, and if you have a form subscription, you have that ability. So they go anywhere from $14.95 to five up to 24, depending upon the study and how thick they are. And they're very crucial. Uh, we found, and what you're alluding to, Your Excellency as well, when you have the study guides and you're writing in those and following along, it's so much easier twofold. If you miss a week, you can't get together. First of all, they have the forum subscription so they can catch up on the video. And then they also have the physical book where they can write in their answers and really keep up with it as well. So yeah, thank you for mentioning that. There are some things like 33 Days to Morning Glory where you can download a few of those. So there's some in there as well. But to have that physical, beautiful color book like presence is absolutely beautiful to have. But uh, thank you for mentioning that for sure. Yes, Suzanne. I'm uh, connected, obviously, and I'm on my my uh, desktop. But um, is there an app for formed? I tried to just now, um, you know, sign in on my um, on my iPad. But is there a um, and I get the emails, you know. But is there a, an app an app that could go on my my mobile phone or on my iPad? Yes. Yeah. Either Android or Apple. Uh, for your iPad, it would be Apple. You can download it. Just look for form.org and you can download it as well. So it, it interacts with your desktop as well, remembering what you watch. So if you started watching something on your desktop or iPad, it, it'll they'll interact with, and remember where you left off. And the beautiful thing about iPad and especially your phone, you can download, you'll see on the phone, you have the special ability in the upper right hand corner, you'll see a download button insignia. If you download that, it'll put it into your phone memory. So if you have an area of bad Wi Fi or you're going on a plane or somewhere that way, you can play it without logging, you know, having Wi Fi. Um, another good way, and it's really easy, um, you can buy a cord, it's $9, it's got a USB cord on one side and uh, uh, Ethernet cord on the other. And then you just plug it into your television and you're good to go. You just hit play. You could do it on your television or on your phone. You could be out. Just to be able to monitor, you could watch it. Fantastic. So that was one of the things that was requested and we're doing that as well. We've done that as well. More information than I can handle, but that's well, we can and get all the door on myself, and we can help you do that. From dear to action to sign up myself because I couldn't do it, but I'm glad. But in terms of talking with my pastor, and I'm trying to, you know, get spiritual resources. Use, but he said, "Well, give, give me the app." I don't know how to get the app. So I would have to app. Go to the Apple store on, on your phone, on your iPad. Okay, I will try that. Fantastic. Just, um, Dora, if you're able to follow up, that's Grafton. Mm -hmm. Am I correct, Suzanne? Grafton? I will follow up. Thank you. Okay. Uh, evangelization. Um, Dora and uh, Gus and it's so this is the first screen on one side it'll say be redeemed by the love of Christ uh, there are other resources in the leaders area I love this because it speaks to anybody in any faith or they are on their faith journey the other side is uh, taken from they if they're good with our codes, they can click on that. It'll that basic mm -hmm. question: Who is Jesus? Church, and then also, if they're interested, they can then, of course, in the, their privacy, they're, they want to see and don't want to get. Uh, they can do that on their own, but if they felt drawn to mass for finding a mask near you. 
parishes. And then if they want to sign up for form because the whole diocese has it, there's an ability to do that as well. And then start watching formed at home and hopefully being drawn back to their church. So uh, we're going to be providing this for you as well. Do that. Uh, it's worked really well in Lent for a lot of parishes. Going, some of them have gone door to door. Some of them have done mailings. Some of them have passed it out for the priesters who have come into to mass for that as well. And then if I could mention there, it said type your name and parish, like the parish, because you can put your the postal code of the capital letter, number letter, space, some people have issues with that, but the best way mm -hmm. is to type to find your parish to read. Fantastic. And then, go ahead. You can make those cards available. The, the ability to print those. Good. Okay. Yep. And then the search, it goes to the message. From you, so this, this is really good because it's asking. Let's see, and it said this started with a question from the angel. It's really, what mm -hmm. it is? It's questioning, raising curiosity. Why do you look for the? He's not here, but he is risen. What a profound statement! I read that. I got goosebumps. Because the search is question, and the I forget who being religious as being in the state of questioning with the infinite knowledge of infinite church, you know, the, um, of our Lord or God, we can keep asking questions. We'll never be all knowing. There's only one all knowing God. And we, for eternity, we can dive into our person. Right? It's just, it's an amazing concept beyond mm -hmm. my understanding, but we'll be able to dive in deeper to that's eternity. We'll never be bored in heaven for sure. So, and the search continues on the search continues. Again, it's those 40 top questions that people have asked on Google that are on form. So again, answering those questions about the Catholic faith in a very small snippets of seven to eight minutes. And we had talked about May 22nd, talking about the sacred heart of Jesus. And the May 29th, we're going to have another webinar. The search begins, which means answering their questions so we have youth directors and, and everybody who is involved with youth, where to direct them because people thinking about choosing the faith on their own in this time period and this the set of the world. And again, the Amen app. But I any, you know, is there some other questions that you can think of or comments? I know we're goes by so quick. Mm -hmm. uh, the app rather rather handy, I have to say, and I'm so philosophically opposed to watching shows on my phone, but uh, I've actually found uh, a form to quite quite easy to to navigate and to watch simply using my phone. So I think the app will probably serve if you can serve old timers like me. A, a lot of people will will get a lot out of the app. I think. So, so true. We found that 70% of the things that are watched on form are through the app on the phone. It's just where people are at, which makes sense. I'll, I'll just mention, Robin and Don, you were talking about some ventures you're going to be doing locally to promote it with the school boards. Did you just want to mention that? So the um, the uh, webinar that Don and Dora are going to do, uh, where we're going to invite uh, youth ministers and our clergy and uh, teachers, school board teachers, and anybody who is involved with youth. Um, and it's that particular webinar is, I think it's the 29th of May, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, and it's geared specifically for youth. And we're going to go through what form can offer for youth. And then the one that's the week ahead of that, 
is going to be similar to what we're doing right now. So this is the Easter piece, the one that's coming up um, the week before in May, is going to be about the Sacred Heart and trying to gear up for our uh, solemnity that's coming in June, uh, but also to just reinforce our whole year as a diocesan group that we're um, journeying through the Sacred Heart and the, uh, the Jubilee. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Dora, any thoughts? Closing. Um, what I'm doing right now, I'm just going to put in my uh, cell phone number. If anyone has like a quick question, I know that you can find help right on formed. It has to our head office. You can put in an email. You can call them. There's uh, toll free numbers. I'm from Hamilton, Ontario. So I'm going to put in the chat my cell phone number if you have any quick questions or you want to get a hold of somebody and someone that understands Canada feel free to give me a call or text yeah exactly thank you so much and then one last thing um the there is leaders.formed.org with a ton of resources on there for any program parish program that you want to run the flyers are there and everything already set up some of them are interactive where you can put in the name of your parish and the dates and of uh, studies, just so much on there. That's a whole nother webinar unto itself. We could take a day on that. So it would be great. So it's just there to your knowledge. So it's again, leaders.formed.org resources. So great. One, 40, 45 minutes, right on time. Yeah. <laughs> So thank you everyone for joining us today. Again, this is recorded. So the, the office will be sending out the recording and uh, making it available, I should say, for sure. And then we're here to help. We're here to serve. So thank you for all that you do. And uh, we're looking forward to May 22nd and May 29th to, to join, to get to everyone together as well. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Scott and Dora. You're really helping us to unpack uh... Well, the vastness of the riches that are in this uh, in this resource, and uh, it, it's it's going to. I mean, we've got a three year subscription. I feel like we won't have unpacked it all even in in three years. But you're certainly helping us to do that, for which we're certainly most grateful. Thank you, thank you, your thank you, your excellency. So, you would you, you would you close us in prayer as well? Um, let's see now. Uh, Father Ray Rick, as Chancellor of Spiritual Affairs, praying is spiritual. You can. Uh, after a closing, I especially was only short. <laughs> the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. As, as it was in the beginning, Amen. May Almighty God bless you, our diocese, all our people, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God bless everyone. Thank Thanks, you. everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, Thank you. Good. Let's leave that there. Yeah, that's a recording thing. Uh, link or whatever can be sent around. Put it in our bulletins. Go down to the red. Parish bulletin. Yeah. There we go.